The basic steps of translation, including initiation, elongation, termination and recycling, are the core steps that happen in order for an open reading frame in an mRNA transcript to be translated into its encoded polypeptide. But as with all processes in the life of an organism, translation is regulated at multiple levels to ensure that specific protein products are produced only when needed. While gene expression is often regulated at the level of transcription, with the cell only producing an mRNA when protein product is desired, we have also come to learn that post-transcriptional regulation is prevalent in all cells. Here we will discuss two broad categories of translation regulation. The global regulation of translation, wherein a majority of mRNAs in the cell are translationally downregulated in response to an external signal, and gene-specific regulation, wherein specific transcripts are transcriptionally regulated through sequence motifs that they contain. It's easy to imagine that there are times in the life of the cell when protein synthesis needs to be globally reduced. The most obvious example is when a cell is depleted of building blocks such as the amino acids. Both eukaryotic and bacterial cells respond to such nutrient deprivation, but in distinct ways. In bacterial cells, uncharged tRNAs are a key signal of nutrient deprivation as tRNAs become uncharged when there are insufficient amino acids available. Uncharged tRNAs have reduced affinity for the GTPase chaperone EFTU and instead bind to the A site of the ribosome where they are not productive in chain elongation since they do not carry an amino acid. These unproductively bound tRNAs effectively block further protein synthesis. Additionally, they trigger a stress response known in bacteria as the stringent response. Ribosomes bound by uncharged tRNAs recruit a protein factor known as ReLA which when bound in this state promotes the synthesis of a small molecule PPGPP or magic spot from GTP and ATP precursors. Magic spot in turn triggers a series of downstream events that ultimately lead to the downregulation of ribosome synthesis and to the increased synthesis of key factors required for recovery from stress. Eukaryotic cells also respond to uncharged tRNAs in the cell but the response is different at the molecular level. In eukaryotes, the uncharged tRNAs do not bind to the ribosome, but instead bind to a kinase known as GCN2, which has a tRNA synthetase-like domain in addition to its kinase domain. Binding of unacylated tRNA activates GCN2, which in turn phosphorylates serine 51 of the alpha subunit of the core initiation factor EIF2. Phosphorylation of EIF2 is central to many cellular signaling pathways including the response to unfolded proteins and double-stranded viral RNA. Once phosphorylated, EIF2 binds more stably to its guanine exchange factor, or GEF, thus leading to overall reduced levels of active EIF2 in the cell. This leads to globally decreased rates of translation on almost all mRNAs. Other general mechanisms for downregulating global translation in eukaryotes involve modulating the activities of the cap binding protein EIF4E and ubiquitous EIF4E binding proteins or 4E BPs. Phosphorylation of either EIF4E or the 4E BPs generally decreases their interaction, keeping active EIF4E levels high in the cell, thereby keeping initiation efficient. These mechanisms are all broadly used by viruses that infect eukaryotic cells and wish to globally downregulate the synthesis of cellular proteins in order to favour synthesis of virally encoded proteins. The other broad type of regulation we'll consider here includes gene-specific translation regulatory processes. In these cases, translation of a given mRNA transcript is specifically regulated. As such, this regulation depends on specific sequence information found in the transcript of interest. The specific sequence can independently form a functional structure or be bound by specific small molecules, regulatory RNAs or proteins to modulate translation. In perhaps the most elegant examples, a specific sequence in the leader of an mRNA transcript folds into a precise three-dimensional structure that binds to small molecules relevant to the downstream transcript. This class of RNA structure is referred to as a riboswitch since the RNA adopts one structure in the absence of ligand but adopts a different structure when ligand is present. These alternative structures lead to alternative outcomes. As an example, in many bacteria, thiamine biosynthesis genes are directly regulated by riboswitches in their 5' leader that modulate the accessibility of the ribosome binding site, 
the shined Algano motif to ribosomes. When thiamine pyrophosphate is abundant, the riboswitch is bound by TPP and the shined Algano motif is sequestered. As a result, no new biosynthetic proteins are needed. When levels of TPP are low, the riboswitch no longer is bound by TPP and the shined Algano sequence is available for recognition by ribosomes and for the synthesis of the relevant biosynthetic proteins. Gene-specific regulation is also common in eukaryotes. Interestingly, most sequences known to contribute to gene-specific regulation in eukaryotes have been found in the three prime UTRs of mRNA transcripts. These are typically longer than the five prime UTRs in eukaryotes. During development, it is understood that complex gene regulation occurs to precisely define when and where certain proteins are synthesized. Given that there is little, if any, active transcription in many developing embryos, most regulation there must be post-transcriptional, acting on the maternally deposited mRNAs. Typically, we find that the three prime UTR can contain binding sites for a wide range of RNA binding proteins that are thought to influence translation initiation events at the five prime end of the mRNA. Because we understand that eukaryotic mRNAs are circularized by the interaction of the cap binding protein EIF4E, the poly A binding protein PABP, and the scaffold protein EIF4G, three prime UTR driven regulation is somewhat less surprising. In one clear example in Drosophila, the Nanos mRNA carries a three prime UTR motif known as the TCE, which is bound by a protein known as SMAUG. SMAUG, in turn, interacts with CUP a well-defined 4E binding protein. This recruitment of the 3' prime UTR of 4E BP effectively competes with recruitment of EIF4G and thus prevents circularization of the mRNA and so blocks efficient translation initiation. Eventually, developmentally timed signals allow for displacement of the cut protein by EIF4G, allowing the productive start of translation of NANOS, a key protein involved in Drosophila development. While there is considerable variation in how such regulatory systems trick the system, the principles are nicely defined by this simple example wherein a sequence element recruits proteins that mimic normal components and thus competes with normal translation.